All right, what's going on, guys? So I just want to give you guys an in-depth look at what my training is looking like um, under six weeks out from competition now. So uh, first session of the week, it's always pretty much a squat bench focused day. So we're doing one at minimal symptoms, so single at minimum symptoms with some light back off work for squat. Bench, we're doing a single at seven, five reps at RPE seven, and then some back off work. So I'm um, still keeping volume pretty high right now. Obviously, volume still gonna be high with you know five, six weeks left before the competition, but um, um, pretty much here I'm explaining that I'm going for 545 pounds um, on my squat here because I've been slowly bringing the weights back up. We got 545 pounds on the bar right now. So it's the heaviest weight I've hit in literally like two weeks, past couple weeks. Kept it low like 455, 495. Um, but we're gonna try and see how this feels today. So far, pretty minimal on the pain. So we're doing a single again, minimal pain. And uh, we're just gonna see how this one feels. If it like obviously hurts like calling it and just doing like really lightweight. But if it feels okay, that's good. That means we're kind of improving, maybe even bump up a little bit more, but we'll see. So 545, let's get this thing. Finally, getting back into 545 pounds now which i really hadn't hit for at least like four weeks literally and actually just yesterday i hit 585 pounds with some like minimal pain it's still like a little bit so i'm trying to figure out some maybe some warm exercises and some things i could do in the meantime because i really at this point don't want to have to take off weeks from squatting here i'm just showing like the gear that i'm using so a knock power knee sleeves as always i got the nike romelios three uh shoes on the knock power wrist wraps the sbd belt this is kind of all the equipment that I'm using for the competition and knock power code Ryan. Yeah, basically just been doing some light back off work for all my squats. So I was only using like 315 pounds, 275 pounds in the past um, for my back off work because um, I've just, I've been trying to keep that load pretty minimal on my quads and everything. And I think the thing is, is that I'm, I moved my, my stance back in to where it was before, where it was giving me pain. The issue is, is that um, as I move my, my squat stance out, the pain feels better. Like there's not as so much pain, kind of goes away. I'm feeling better, but I don't feel as explosive. I don't feel as strong. It doesn't feel as optimal for me to um, squat out of that position. And so I'm trying to widen my stance back out. Um, that's kind of what I did before when I was rehabbing it up over quarantine and everything. Um, was doing that, bringing the squat stance out. It's just harder for me to hit depth, not as much mobility, and I just don't feel as strong in that position. So uh, we're trying to get better at that. But um, here, had a little mishap with 380 pounds. Um, <laughs> literally popped the popped the, the bar right over the, uh, right over the rack here. But this is my top single on bench here okay. for right. my first training day of the week. And I think that kind of messed me up a little bit. Like this should have been a lot easier than that actually was. That ends up being like a nine, nine and a half um, RPE. And it was supposed to be like RPE seven to eight. And it could have been an RPE eight, but I think I, I, I kind of lost oh, some tightness and stuff. What do you think about that? What the hell? What the hell? Holy shit. This thing, those things like fall. Almost saw the end of your life right there, bud. Oh my goodness, man. I'm just like. I'm too tight. I'm too tight at the beginning, man. Popped it right over the top. Too much damn strength. I'm not in the bar before you want to come off. Dude, I've had that almost happen before. I feel like maybe I'm like I'm pushing into the bar too much as I'm like. I mean, well, look, look at how much little room there is right there. Yeah, honestly, I like I just put a little too much pressure in, pop it right over. Yeah. So yeah, then we had like I said a top set of five at RP seven. So for this. 340 pounds for a top set of five. Um, still keeping things like RP seven, so we're not going like RP nine to 10, not trying to kill myself um, and come in the next day feeling exhausted. So kept this pretty close to seven to eight, um, felt pretty good. And just finished up with some back off work with some 305s. So we had what, like a five by five or something like that today. Um, in this in this first session. So still a good amount of back off work, which like honestly it's pretty taxing once you get to the end of the workout like i'd honestly would like to do more bodybuilding stuff at the end but it's already been like two hours <laughs> of the workout i'm kind of exhausted and i also don't want to like um you know strain myself for the next training the next day so like if i'm doing a whole bunch of back exercises and stuff is that going to affect my deadlift the next day especially as we get closer so i obviously finish off the workout um usually mondays session one my training session i'll finish off the workout with some leg extensions we're hitting a workout now, uh, heading straight up to Pinnacle. So we're hitting deadlifts and bench today. Natalie is hitting a deadlift max today, I believe. Um, I can try. <laughs> what are you supposed to hit today? I'm doing back and biceps. So you're hitting deadlift? You, you want to deadlift first? Deadlift with me? Oh, maybe. We might, have to, we might have to switch the weights a little bit, but like, 
she's I'm kind of interested to see what I can do. That would be cool, I'm right? Try. Hey, you could hit at least 225, right? Yeah, probably. Like, I think it'd be cool. And then day two, we're right back at it. So session two, start off with deadlift. Deadlift and bench day, literally no accessories today. So we have a single at seven on deadlift with some five by five back off work. Single at seven on touch and go bench, set of five at RPE seven, and then back off work. So pretty, like honestly, a pretty strenuous day on, on Tuesday. So it's hard, honestly, people think it's like, it's hard to, to bench back to back days. Um, and it, honestly it is, but it gives me a couple days to rest in between um, before my next big bench day after that. So yeah, here's obviously me deadlifting 585 pounds last one up here. So he's just like a 615 top single, which I think moved pretty well. Honestly, that was, that was a pretty fair RPE 7, I would say. I've hit like 615 for sets of four in the past, so that felt pretty solid. Back off work, like I said, 5x5 five five at 505 pounds, which is pretty light and easy. It just like, you know, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot out of you, but uh, it definitely like builds up over time. You finally finish your 5x5, five five and you're like, okay, move right on the bench. So here for some bench work on a Tuesday. So this I actually did pause because I, I do like to work on my competition pauses. I'm trying to get better, honestly, at my competition pauses. So these are more or less not so much touch and go reps. I mean, usually Monday is a competition pause day for bench. Tuesday is always a touch and go day. So that way there's a little bit of variation. People are like, why do you bench back to back days? And it's like mostly because there's just that variation and that can probably load more weight on touch and go bench. Um, so anyways, moving on to session three. So it's the third day of the week. We have a little bit of an active rest day, which requires me to do OHP, so overhead press. Um, but realistically, um, I, don't, I don't usually do standing overhead press. Um, I just do like a dumbbell press instead. Um, just more shoulder focused, in my opinion. I can load more weight on it and not have to worry about like, I, I just I just never got too much into OHP and this is kind of like my substitute for it I guess um, it's just doing the seated dumbbell um, overhead presses and then obviously on a day like this on Wednesday I basically just do kind of like an arm and shoulder day I'll throw in some like some back work and stuff like that so here's Natalie uh, doing like a little arm and shoulder day with me as well um, but pretty much yeah I'm just I'm just doing some accessory work that I have not been able to do on the other days. Like I said, when it comes to four weeks out, five weeks out from competition, like I really start to limit the actual accessories that I do. So again, I'm hitting more leg extensions. I'm trying to strengthen up like my quads individually, strengthen up the the tendons, um, my my quad tendons, because I like I said had that tendonized issue, and I think these did help me in the past, where I kind of slowly, slowly, slowly built up the weight on these, um, just using RPEs that are relatively low so i'm not going like rp10 on on quad extensions you know what i mean but like back in quarantine when i was um having some issues with my quads um i think the leg extensions did help a little bit with strengthening the actual tendon the joint all that stuff uh felt a little bit better so finished off with some triceps and stuff like that overall i don't think we filmed absolutely everything for this section of the workout but like um yeah pretty much it Pretty much Wednesday's session three of the week is an active rest day. I'm not going RP 10 on, on, you know, triceps extension or whatever, because I know I still have those, you know, bench sessions on day four and five. So, all right, so day four of the gym today. So yesterday was a bodybuilding day. Today we're getting back into some more powerlifting movements. So we have RDLs today, heavy RDLs. We have two different variations of bench. So we have feet up bench to eliminate some leg drive, and we have incline bench, which we're gonna do incline dumbbell today. And then we'll also probably do some hamstring curls, maybe a couple other bodybuilding exercises if we have time. And tomorrow is a heavy squat bench day. So today we're back on the RDL grind. Um, I usually do a deadlift variation. So a deadlift one time per week, then a deadlift variation on the second deadlift day. So RDLs today, let's get it. Johan's lifting with us today again as well we got the pre-workout going over here so uh what are we doing johan what are we doing we're gonna do pink lemonade and we're gonna chase it man. we're doing pink lemonade flight we're gonna scoop it chase it down with some uh what is this rocket pop or something like that 3d so we got that that i've never tried this before i have combined them before in a cup but we're uh, we're just gonna like instead of using any water we're just gonna chase it down with some freaking 3d oh. should i put like a little bit of this in my mouth first you think like, you know, some people like BPN flight 10% off using code danglers always. Here we go. Oh, oh, dude, I, I, I totally forgot. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's go. Here we go. 
Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I heard it like sizzle up in it's there. It's so foamy. I'm moving straight into day four of the training week. So we do a little deadlift um, variation day. So it it's most of the time it's either RDLs or it's like a pause deadlift or it's a deficit deadlift or a uh, block pull or something like that. Um, it's, it's kind of been changing as according to Josh has been Josh has been having me doing some uh, some different things. So we've been doing RDLs basically the past like seven weeks, I think almost. Um, so we're getting into some heavier RPEs now. So I think max top set is like an RPE eight now. So we basically do like a set of um, eights at RPE five, set of eight at RPE six, set of eight at RPE seven, and set of eight at RPE eight. So it's like you're not going all out max, but you're getting pretty close to it. So I did do 545 pounds and this was probably closer to like an RP 910. Um, but I was super happy about getting this 545 pounds for a set of eight on RDLs because I have not hit this yet before. I hit like a set of six previously. So 545 pounds for a set of eight on RDLs. I was extremely happy with that. It did kind of wreck me a little bit for the next day. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then we do have incline bench, which they don't have any specific setup incline benches here. So I just do um, dumbbell incline bench and I kind of like this better because it's a little variation um, from just the standard barbell. I like to do some dumbbell work too. So we did 110 pounds, four sets of eight, and then we do 120 pounds. So as you guys saw in the in the protocol for the day, same type of thing. I do like a set of eight at RP5, set of eight at RP6, set of eight at RP7, and then usually like a set of eight at RP8 or something like that, just a little bit more. Um, a little bit more stressful, but not entirely like a failure RP10. And then here we have um, feet up bench. This is to take out the leg drive in the movement essentially. So it's like this or like um, feet up bench, like Larson presses are gonna take your, your leg drive out for the most part. So we're doing sets of sixes on this, pretty much I've been doing this the past, like as long as I can remember in my training like the past like year, year and a half, I've been doing these feet up benches and I've honestly been getting stronger at them. And I think it's been helping. Uh, hit a top set of six with 295 pounds at like RPE seven. So I think that was a pretty solid day, and uh, a couple of a couple of back exercises and stuff after that. But that was about it for that um, for session for session four. So moving right on to day five to end off the week, we have another squat bench day. So this is basically very very similar to how Monday's session one looks. So then here we have. A single and minimal symptoms again for squats so again it's not i'm not trying to push myself to a certain rpe necessarily normally be like a single at rpe seven to eight and then some you know percentage based back off work or something like that but we're doing some very very light back off work with 315 pounds again trying to keep the inflammation pretty low um hopefully allow my quads to like heal up and stuff while still using some decent weight so i, I still want to here, here's 375 pounds i think move pretty pretty well and you know just stuck with that for my single for the day i've been kind of working with like 375 to 3 you know 380 ish for my top singles um and they're usually around like rp8 8.5 so that felt pretty good for the day here's my set of four at rp7 and i think that's really fair like that was almost like rp6 honestly which is good though and then my back and forth to finish it off a little four by four with 315 um not too bad just something just something to get the rest of the volume work in. And uh, pretty gassed after that, hit hamstring curls, called it a day. That'd be the training week for the entire, uh, the entire five days. That's like my hardcore training. And then usually session six, uh, I don't have anything programmed for sessions. And then for session six, there's really no protocol. So this could be like a, a workout on Saturday or Sunday. So we have those five big powerlifting days. Obviously Wednesday is like an active rest day. Still supposed to hit a couple different movements and stuff like that on the protocol specifically. But um, Saturday, I usually hit a little workout, which will be like a bodybuilding style workout. Still probably a shoulder and arms type of thing. But um, I could also throw some back or some accessories that I wasn't able to hit throughout the week. But when it comes down to the last like five, four weeks, weeks of my prep so like right now i'm just over five weeks out from competition um it doesn't really make sense for me to like do a whole bunch of accessories like push myself on a whole bunch of accessories when i could be like sore the next day it could affect my training the next day so when it gets down to like the last four weeks or so i pretty much almost designate um, all my training to just squat bench or deadlift um, when it's like when i'm further out from competition it's not as big of a deal i can throw in a lot more back exercises some extra chest exercises all that kind of stuff 
but now it just has the chance of potentially hurting my training if I throw in too much accessories. So I kind of do limited accessories the last few weeks or even no accessories um, these last couple of weeks and just focus all my energy um, on squat bench deadlift and to limit fatigue as well. So that's pretty much how I do it. So I'll train like those six days of the week, take off Sunday completely, then we're back on it on Monday. So that's pretty much how my training has been uh, looted the past like year or so. If you guys do want to see a video like two to three weeks out, like a full training week, that could also be something that I could put together as well because as we get closer to competition, there's gonna be heavier and heavier weights, higher intensity. So we're hitting um, some weights that are closer to max, really, really high intensity sets that will give you, will give me and my coach a better idea of where my lifts are gonna be at. So anyways, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. This is my entire training week, what it looks like. I gave you guys all the protocols on the screen for exactly what I do. So um, high volume right now, but it's all good. We're getting through it. And uh, hopefully his quads will be better for squats for the meet. And uh, only a few weeks left. So every training session counts. We're going to keep getting after it and keep trying to be the strongest we can for this meet. So let's get it, man. Appreciate all the support. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.